where's the morphine? I don't know where the morphine is. Hey guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Carolyn Porter Thomas and thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. So I don't really know like how to say it, but uh, lately, and I don't know if you could feel it, I feel like I could feel it, but I'm not really sure if anybody else could feel it. Uh, lately I've really been feeling kind of disconnected from my channel. Um, I don't know, like, like my presence wasn't as strong or as passionate. And I've really been struggling with it for the probably of the last six months. It's been really challenging. And I have just kind of lost my drive. And I kept asking myself, like, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like, you love making videos. You love connecting with your subscribers. You love sharing information with the world. Like, what is wrong? And I finally figured out that I think what's happened is that I sort of lost that human connection, um, which was the whole reason why I started the YouTube channel in the first place and um, I thought you know maybe one way that I could bring that back and bring my passion back is maybe I could also have like story time videos like you know sharing my experiences of being a nurse and whatnot. <laughs> so um, as you know being a nurse and working in a hospital and working with patients you're gonna find yourself in all sorts of situations and in the process of healing, teaching and connecting, why not share it with you guys? <laughs> so these new videos, I'm thinking about just maybe calling them like shift report or change of shift. You know, change of shift is a time when we all connect, we all, you know, get the lowdown on what's happening and stuff like that. But if you can think of another name, just let me know. I would love to name it something, although it's not necessary. It can just be literally story time and that's it. And that's going to be a time where I grab either hot water with lemon. By the way, this is hot water with lemon and cayenne pepper. There's a cold going around and I think that I beat it with this lemon and cayenne pepper hot water. And then I also use that ocean spray, that nasal spray that I'm like obsessed with. I totally think that that helped me beat the cold. I got better so quick and I never truly got that sick. So if you guys have that cold going around, of course, in the hospital we're exposed to everything under the sun. Um, this helped me beat it. So, drink up. So, the first story that I will be sharing with you guys is obviously, as the title suggests, that time I stole morphine. So, the story is sort of a two-step story. Basically, if you're in nursing school now, or if you're a new nurse, or if you're an experienced nurse, you know how nerve-wracking it is being a new nurse because one day you're a normal person just caring and looking after yourself and then the next day you suddenly have all these people that you're somehow responsible for and need to care for and it's a lot of pressure and when i started as a new nurse i was truly feeling that pressure i am i think by nature more of a nervous person which isn't such a bad thing but uh anyways it caused me you know my stress levels to go like through the roof it was just a hard time when i was a new nurse so the last day and this is part one this is related to the title but it's not about that specific thing so unfortunately my last day of preceptorship which was a three month long preceptorship i made a terrible mistake and i gave the wrong patient another patient's medications and so coming off of that was really hard. I was really nervous. I had lost a lot of confidence. I was just convinced that one more mistake and you know, the trap door was gonna open up and I was gonna get sucked in and that was it. I was just so nervous. So anyways, um, about a month later, give or take, I'm working on a med surge telemetry floor and we have a lot of surgical patients and we give pain medication like it's nothing and you know i mean morphine this dilated that percocets here tramadol there i mean it's just almost everybody gets something for pain so hard to keep track of but you know we do our best so i had a patient who had two milligrams of morphine ordered and on hands we had a four milligram vial of morphine in one ml 
So let's do some quick nursing math and figure out how much I was supposed to give. If you take the four milligrams and one ml and we know that we just need to give half, well, we're going to give half of an ml or 0.5 mls. If you're like a new nursing student or you're looking to give on nursing, you might not know what this is, but there's a machine called the Pixis. The Pixis is the machine that dispenses all of the medications. It's actually like a really cool invention. Like all you have to do is go select your patient and select your medication and then boom, click remove and it gives you all your medications. It's awesome, like best invention for nurses ever. I don't know what they did before that. I'm not really sure how nursing existed before that. Anyways, I guess somehow they managed. But anyways, it's an amazing invention. Sometimes when you're drawing up narcotics and you're not going to give the whole thing, it asks you if you would like to waste. Now as a nurse, if you guys are new, if you're not new, whatever, you have to witness other nurses wasting narcotics and that's just to make sure we're not pocketing them and taking them ourselves or selling them. That's a process that we all know. Now in this particular machine, we could either do it at that same time or we could do it after. Then, since I was new, I didn't really know what my routine was. I would just kind of do it one time this way and another time that way. So um, it's probably 11 a.m. and I had a patient that requested their morphine. So I go to get it and I take it out. I give the patient the medication and it's a super busy time. I mean, I have six or seven patients. I mean, I'm running up and down those halls. The first like three months of nursing, I don't think I ate or hardly went to the bathroom or did anything. Like I just had no self care. Like I was just on automatic like just trying to get everything done. So anyways, I'm going home, gave report, everything feels good. I'm like, that's a good day, you know? Like, I had a really good day, like nothing crazy happened, everybody made it. <laughs> it was a good day. So I'm literally, you know, going to bed, going to sleep. I went to sleep, fine, no problems. I'm working the next day, so I'm like, okay, I better get my sleep in. All of a sudden, at three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, <gasps> oh my God, I don't know what I did with that other thing of morphine. Searching every single like folder in my mind, trying to remember like what I did with this thing. And I seriously could not remember. The only thing I can think of is that right after giving the 0.5 milligrams, because I know I gave the right dose, because God knows I would not make that mistake. Well, maybe not. Well, maybe not. I think that I gave it and I put it down the sharps which if you guys know, a sharps is a place where we throw away all of our needles. Now, you're not really supposed to waste the, um, narcotics like that, but actually this was like eight years ago, and I believe at that time, like that's what everyone did. We didn't really know any differently. Maybe we should have, but I think that's what we did. Now we're supposed to waste it in the sink, and like everybody knows that, but back then, pretty much everybody wasted it in the sharps, and that was considered okay, as far as I knew. <laughs> So that's the only thing I could think of. But in my 3 a.m. panic, I mean, I'm sweating, I'm shaking, and I'm imagining walking in and my manager, my charge nurse, every other senior nurse that's like really mean and scary, all the doctors and everybody just like staring at me. Like, where's the morphine? And I'm like, I don't know where the morphine is. I am so nervous that I don't sleep at all. So, not sleeping, I kept my eyes closed just so like my eyes got lubricated. That's like one thing, if I can't sleep, which kind of happens sometimes, then I just keep my eyes closed so that they're lubricated. Then I just get dressed and go to work. So I'm like panicking, I'm like looking around for this patient's name and the patient's not there. I go to the room, patient is physically not there. I didn't want to draw any attention to it, so I didn't want to ask people like, hey, where did that patient go? You know, where did they go? I don't know, maybe they left AMA, uh, maybe something happened, they were transferred to the unit, I don't know, but when I left, the patient was fine, and so I, I don't know like where the patient went. And I was so nervous that I just, I didn't want to bring any attention to it because I had already made like a huge mistake a month ago, and I really didn't want to make another mistake, and I wasn't even sure if I made the mistake to begin with. So I, literally just don't know what to do so I don't do anything and I'm so nervous all day my manager actually does call me and I'm like hello hey are you okay anyways I went there to talk and it was nothing to do with that it was something completely <sighs> my camera battery died okay so where was I all right so, oh yeah so I went to talk to the director and it was nothing to do with the morphine so I decided never to mention it. And to this day, um, nobody has ever mentioned it. It's been about eight years, so I 
think it's safe to say that uh, it's not going to be investigated. <laughs> now I guess like, you know, if they have some sort of suspicion that you're taking medications or taking narcotics, like you just take a drug test and you know, that's pretty much it. If it comes back negative, then you're totally fine. So had I known that in the past, I probably would have been able to sleep, but I didn't in that instance. I wasn't really sure if like the cops were gonna be waiting for me at work or anything. Like it was just all nerve wracking. So the moral of the story is, you know, a lot of the things that happen at work are so nerve wracking and so scary. But one thing that I learned um, in order to calm my fears is to think about the absolute worst case scenario. In this case, it did help to know that, you know, you just take a drug test and you're fine. So if something like that happens, then I just appease my mind that way. So hopefully you're clean enough to pass the drug test. If not, you might have to be a little bit worried, a little bit more worried, and hopefully that's not the case. The other thing is, I always just think about what really matters is did it cause harm to the patient? And absolutely not. The patient was given the correct amount of medication. I just am not sure what happened happened to the other amount. So safety first, the patient was safe. So I always kind of appease my mind that way if I do make any similar mistakes, which we're all human. So, you know, things can happen. So anyways, I really hope that you like this new story type telling video. If you do like it, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Do you guys have any stories that you want to share? I would love to hear them. Do you have any similar stories with morphine? Are there any stories that you want to hear? I have so many. I've been a nurse for eight years. That's eight years of compiling amazing stories. And also let me know um, if you do anything that they're related to. So if it's like other narcotic medications, patient sleepwalking, crazy family members, whatever you wanna hear, I've got it, let me know. So I love you guys so much and I'm so glad, I feel so good. I can't tell you like how good it feels right now to just be able to talk and communicate with you and just love you. All right, thank you so much. I love you so much. Oh, and by the way, I finally opened up an Instagram account, so please follow me on Instagram. And as usual, I cannot wait to see you in my next video. I love you so much. Bye. Unstoppable focus, what does this mean? It means focusing on the things that are going to make you as a person that you are destined to become. Unstoppable focus means understanding that 80% of the things you are doing are not worthy of your time. And it is up to you to decide which 20% of things will get you where you want to be. Unstoppable focus means never giving up. It means understanding that even when you do not feel like it, you must sleep on it and start it over. It also means that you understand that accomplishing one goal will only help you accomplish more goals in the future. Dream big, take small steps, work hard, study hard, play hard.